Yeah. Okay. So what we started with yesterday is we talked about momentum. Momentum is the amount of momentum is dictated by the amount of mass of something and the velocity in which something is traveling. So I mentioned this yesterday. Part of the reason that we have such major collisions now in two of our biggest contact sports being football, probably even rugby, I guess, if you look at it, football, rugby, and hockey, is because the guys are bigger and they move a lot faster than they ever have. So it's creating a lot more uh, injuries. But the injuries prevalent to momentum are the concussion injuries, and those are the ones that we, that we uh, is in today's mainstream. Um, so momentum is found by taking your mass and multiplying by your velocity. If we look at change in momentum, so P2 minus P1, we talk about the word impulse. Okay, so impulse is found by either change in momentum or the amount of force times the amount of time, the amount of force times the time at which the force is occurred. Okay, and this is referred to as impulse. So we can go M2 V2 minus M1 V1, and that's equal to your impulse, your force times time. So your force times time is the impulse, which is equal equivalent to the uh, change in momentum. Then we discuss law of conservation of momentum. If two objects are coming together, for example, a head-on collision with two vehicles crashing, the momentum that occurs before the collision is the exact same as the momentum that occurs after the collision. Now there are a couple of different scenarios that can happen. The first two scenarios are in which the two objects that come together move off in different directions with different velocities. The second scenario that we looked at yesterday was if the two couple or come together and move off while well, joined, we can calculate what their velocity is if the two objects are joined. So for instance, a train that pulls up couples with another car on the train, okay, so if you've ever seen that happen, then the two, the momentum of the, of the engine and the momentum of the car beforehand will be the same as the, the combined momentum after, the, after the, uh, the collision has occurred. Now, for the most part, to begin with yesterday, we looked at just questions that pertain to um, moving in either the same or just opposite directions. However, the last thing that we did yesterday is we looked at the momentum of uh, a grenade that explodes in which we have them moving in different directions. Okay? So, I'm going to look at the same question I ended the class off yesterday on page 312. So, a grenade at mass 1.2 kg is at rest on a smooth frictionless surface. So, your momentum before the collision occurred was zero kilograms meters per second. So that's before the before the object, before the grenade actually explodes, it's not <coughs> moving. So it's it starts at zero. Two pieces fly off, or three pieces fly off the grenade. The first piece is a 0.5 kilogram piece, flies off horizontally to the north at three meters per second. So the first piece after the collision is 0.5 times uh, 3 meters per second, which is 1.5 kilograms meters per second, but it was also in a direction north. So we have to make a note of that. P2 prime. The second piece was 0.3 kg, and it flew off at 4 meters per second, so 1.2 kilograms meters per second, and it was southwest, 
So, in that direction there. And again, 45 degrees. Okay. So the first thing I have to do, now this goes back to what we did with forces. This goes back to what we did with the airplane question. You need to write the equation out first. So to begin with, you have no momentum beforehand. You have three pieces that contain momentum after the fact. I know the momentum on the first two pieces. <coughs> the first piece is 1.5 kilograms meters per second to the north. The second piece is 1.2 kilogram meters per second to the southwest. So I want to find out what the momentum of the third piece is so that I can then find the velocity of the third piece. So P3 prime is equal to negative P1 prime minus P2 prime. I subtract both of these to the other side. Okay? So yesterday I showed you this by drawing it out using law of cosines and law of sines to solve it. Today I'll show you using your right triangle. Okay? So the first thing I need to do is find out if this is 1.2 here, I need to find out what this component is and this component is. So I need the sine of 45 times 1.2. 0 0.8485. Perfect. Which also means that this is 8485 as well. This guy is south. This guy is west. Okay. So I'm going to use now... my x and y to do this, okay? But here's the catch. Here's the catch in this question. If I'm going to do it this way, I notice I have a negative P1. Well, what's the negative of 1.5 to the north? 1.5 to the south. So I'm going to write that right here, 1.5 south. I need the negative of 0.8485 to the south. 0.8485 to the north, and the negative of 0.8485 to the west. 0.8485 to the east. So I have 0.8485 to the east. 1.5 subtract 0.8485. Zero point six five two. Six five one five. One four seven. Okay. Thank you. And which direction is that? South. Because it's the larger direction, right? Okay, so now I'm going to draw it. So I'm going to go first, I'm going to go to the east. That's point eight four eight five. And I'm going to go south, 0.6515, and right there is going to be my P3 prime. Okay? So you use Pythagorean theorem. One point. 072. 1 0.072. 0 no, 0. Sorry. 070. 070. Yeah. Kilograms, meters per second. And now I need my angle. Calculate my angle using 10. 0.6515 divided by 0.8485. So that is east. Thirty-seven point what? Sorry. Five one seven nine. Five one eight degrees to the south. Okay. 
the question asks me for the velocity after the grenade is exploded of the third piece. So how do I find the velocity here? Divide by the mass. And what's the mass of that third piece? 0 0.04. How'd you get that? You started with 1.2 kilogram. You have a 0.5 piece, a 0.3 piece. That means the last piece has to be 0.4 to make 1.2. So take 1.07 divided by 0.4. So. Okay. Questions. So yesterday I did it just by drawing the negatives of these two, and I can get it using a lot of cosines, a lot of sines. That's okay. Second, you're going to find that when you do the questions, this is going to have a momentum the next time you do it. That 1.2 kilogram grenade will be moving. So. That means that I'm going to have a P1 and when I want to find P3 prime, what is it equal to? If I want to get P3 prime by itself, what's it equal to? subtract P1 prime, subtract P2 prime. So when you're drawing out your vectors now, if you do it using this method, your P1 is going to stay as a positive. These two will be opposite directions is what they're given. So you will have to do this question again, in which you have to do, you add in one more component. So you'll have one more set of components here for that question. And that's all that changes. Okay? Any questions about it? So that's two days in a row we've done the same question. Okay. All right. Now, just for fun, we're going to look at a video here. Like I said, the grade 12 <laughs> saw this video last year. This video has to do with uh, comparing momentum. Um, what page is that question on that we just did? Okay, so the two things that affect momentum are mass and velocity. So when you increase the mass, you increase the velocity. So how does that compare? So what we're going to look at is a football player. Um, recently retired, recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. He was linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens, his name's Ray Lewis. So he is going, they're going to compare the difference between him running through a door and the SWAT team using their battering ram. And so it compares the impact of a large man, he's I think 265 pounds, I think they say, and a battering ram, which I think is 12 pounds, and the difference between the damage done between him and the <coughs> battering ram that they use, that the SWAT team uses to get through the door.
remember, this is Baltimore, our turn. In Baltimore, nobody delivered like we do. Are you ready? Okay, let's go! Frank Parsons, the preferred office supplies and paper partner at the Baltimore Ravens. Frank Parsons, everything your business needs to deliver. It's called a bullish. A football defender explodes forward, ready to obliterate anyone standing between him and the ball. He's like a human battering ram. Which got us thinking, is he really like a battering ram? Pack as much force as an actual battering ram. To answer that question, we loaded up our science hardware and headed to the outdoor testing facility. And we recruited one of the best defensive players of all time, all-pro NFL linebacker Ray Lewis. Lewis is simply one of the most dominant players in the game. To obliterate opponents with the bull rush. A bull rush is taking a man's will and said, I can deal with you any way I feel like dealing with you. I'm going to put my helmet right in front of your chin. I'm going to put my hands right in front of your shoulder pads. And I'm going to push you as hard as I can to make sure I can get you out of the way. So I already made up in my mind that anything's in front of me, I'm destroying. That's when football and science comes together for real. For this test, Ray Lewis is going up against an all-star in his own field. Veteran SWAT team leader, Lee Waddell. This law enforcement tough guy has tracked down and apprehended thousands of dangerous criminals. Ray and Lee will each take on the same unforgiving opponent, a solid wooden door. This is a standard front door, two inches thick, and we've added extra bracing, heavy screws, and a chain lock to make sure the door provides maximum resistance. This door is not some prop door. This is a regular front door, like the door in your house. And it's on there. I mean, it's solid. And our scientists have attached a load cell to the door. This high-tech sensor will record exactly how many pounds of force our linebacker and our SWAT officer deliver when they come on knock in. So what do you have that you're going to use to get through the door? What we're going to use is about a 15 pound battering ram here. Pretty standard. We use this to breach a lot of doors. This is what we go through all the time. And we're going to see who wins, the battering ram or the bull rush. Let's do it. All right. Good impact, see right here, right on the sensor. So that'll give us some really good numbers. So how much force did the battering ram generate? The load cell reveals it smashed the door with 800 pounds of force. That's like butting heads with a real ram. From only two feet away, the 15-pound ram accelerates rapidly to almost 20 miles an hour. And all of that energy is focused on the small three-inch end. Since an NFL player can't move that fast and can't deliver a hit with such a concentrated contact area, football's bull rush shouldn't be able to generate as much force as this battering ram. But if anyone's up to the challenge, it's Ray Lewis. So what we've done is we've ripped up a door 
with a pressure plate in it to see exactly how much force you apply when you're bull rushing the line. If you look at this, I mean, this is a real door. I mean, you gotta really hit this thing. All right, let's do it. Let's do it, man. Sign All right. speech, <laughs> Getting through a door this solid is no joke. If Ray hits the door wrong, the energy he creates will reflect right back at him. Sports science, open up. Capture technology gives us an inside look. The key equation here is force equals mass times acceleration. Ray weighs 15 times more than the battering ram, and by lowering his center of gravity one foot and accelerating up to six Gs, amazingly, Ray generates over. 1,000 pounds of force. That's 200 more pounds of bone-crushing force than the battering ram. And the only reason Ray doesn't break bones every time he hits someone is because shoulder pads decrease the force by 50%. And the ribcage is made to flex up to two and a half inches. But even with these factors, when you get hit by a Ray Lewis bull rush, it'll still feel like you're getting trampled by a real raging bull. That's how Ray Lewis uses physics to blow someone's doors off. Science meets Ray Lewis, and science loses again. 